right. Hello and welcome to the Studio Utani podcast where we're going to ask, what's the story, mother? I'm, uh, I'm Matt. And I'm Baker. Back again. And, yeah. And um, today we are uh, going to be talking some more about Dune. Now, uh, at this point, uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to Denis Villeneuve's Dune coming out just, just because I kind of want to stop talking about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> On the Alien podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like this is the Dune show. Um, but um, we, we talked um, a little bit about it behind the scenes. And we were thinking like, you know, this is kind of the last time in human history <laughs> where we can... Um, look back on david lynch's dune um without having seen the uh the uh the forthcoming gloriousness of denis villeneuve's this is the last uh, pure experience yeah exactly and we'd never seen it before so we decided to go back and watch it for the very first time and um yeah we're gonna kind of do a little bit of a a retrospective about it uh but (laughs) before we do that um Yes. We have a little bit of news uh, <laughs> that came up earlier uh, this week. So, um, our boy Ridley. Ridley. Scott, yeah, our boy Ridley Scott. Um, so, uh, this is kind of a big thing. So, Ridley Scott's uh, got a couple of movies coming out soon. And I, I think he was being interviewed for uh, The Last Duel, which looks excellent, by the way. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing yeah. that film. Uh, but, so. Yeah, but in the interview, um, Ridley Scott was asked about uh, the upcoming Alien TV series, and um, is Disney Plus right? Uh, it's not going to be on Disney Plus in the states. It's going to be on Hulu. Oh. Um, oh, really? Hulu? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he was asked about it, and it, because Ridley Scott is accredited executive producer on that show, and you know, which is being you know. Um, put together by Noah Hawley, um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, a uh, gentleman who did Fargo. Um, and oh, I, uh, the show? Yeah, the yeah. show Fargo, not the movie, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah. And um, I've not Fargo. seen that, but I've heard nothing but good things, and he seems like a pretty competent um, writer, showrunner, so I trust him. But Ridley Scott was asked how that was coming along, and Ridley Scott, who is the EP on the show, Need I See Again, his response <laughs> to this was... Um, it, it won't be as good as uh, as the 1979 film. Um, as good as my movie. As good as the movie that I made. And um, <laughs> there is a lot to unpack about that <laughs> statement. And uh, we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about it. Um, I love Ridley Scott. He's one of my favorite filmmakers. He's absolutely fantastic. Um, but... Um, I don't know. This uh, this kind of seems a little bit petty to me. Um, what do you What do you think, Baker? I tend to agree. I think he has little faith as well. New show looks pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen much of it. I mean, it's not I know, but the, the premise of it. The premise. Everything yeah, we know. Sure. I, I mean, the thing that we've known about Ridley for a little while now is that he's really wanted to get back into Alien, and I and I I feel like maybe he thinks or feels like it kind of got away from him at some point. Like, I think, he's, yeah, sure. I think, I think he's on record saying that he's, uh, he was upset that the studio didn't ask him to direct um, the sequel um, to alien. Right. And, and maybe a little um, salty about Prometheus as well. Perception well, on that. No, and Covenant, I, mean, I, guess. I mean, I think there's an interesting um kind of pathology to examine between both prometheus and alien covenant but i think in both of those there is you know kind of a clear attempt to try and reclaim the franchise oh yeah absolutely and you know especially with some of the the noted drama between him and neil blancamp um right but um I, i i feel like ridley scott um I mean, we can't we can't deny the impact that he's had. I mean, he directed that very first movie. He's directed half of the films in the Alien series at this point. True, but, but I, I I think 
he feels like it should be like his franchise Mm -hmm. and um i don't think he can really i don't i don't think we can really say that it's exclusively his you know Um, i think we can assume he didn't have much creative control in this show (laughs) maybe not i mean as an executive producer he definitely has a say in it Um, right i i mean the the executive producers you know are typically the ones that are like funding so i Mm -hmm. i wouldn't say that he's like totally bitter about it like i i I think he definitely you know does have like a say in it i i think really there's just sort of this reflexive instinct with him about not yeah just not i'm not the one who's steering the ship and And i get that you know i i get it i get where he's coming from i i mean I kind of do, but I, I just feel like here's the thing with Alien. Alien is a very, very director driven franchise. I think Red Letter Media pointed out that each of like the main four Alien films is the exact same movie, <laughs> yeah. but they don't different feel directors. that. But they don't feel that way. They all feel very different because of the directors, and mm-hmm. that's kind of cool. Um, I think really Scott doesn't really want to you let know, other people play with his toys. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. It just kind of reads to me yeah. like, again, just being really kind of petty. And again, I love Ridley Scott. I think he's a you know fantastic filmmaker. I'm looking forward to seeing um, The Last Duel and also his Gucci movie. Um, and, mm-hmm. and frankly, any other alien movie that he makes i i i'm totally yeah. down for it okay. i don't know i don't know if he's ever going to get to do his third david movie but i i'd love to see it but I also, nice. but i also feel like ridley needs to kind of acknowledge that it's you know it's a little self-awareness yeah yeah you he needs to acknowledge that it's not just a ridley scott story you know that there's other talents that have contributed to this franchise that cameron giger I mean, yeah, well yeah you know. G- cameron hr giger um you know all the various like you know novelists uh, oh yeah you know and every it's like it's like this is a franchise that you know has been built up by i'm many sure there's different... some sorry oh, yeah it's, just, it's yeah. a franchise that's been built up by many people you know mm-hmm. Um, I think there's probably some rose tinted glasses going on where he's just looking back when this, it was such a big hit, right? Yeah. And, you know, well, well, for and it to all, be, it, it kind of catapulted this whole thing. So, well, yeah. Sure it, he looks it, back on it finally. Oh, yeah. It established him as a director. You know? That said, there I have problems with the first alien still that I'm sure the new oh, show could do better, you know? Oh, really? Being, realistically. Well, well, actually, well, now I'm kind of <laughs> curious. What, 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 what well, I mean, just dated stuff like the explosion at the end, for instance, you know? I, mean, I always thought that looked pretty lame. Well, I mean, I think it's about as good as, like, you know, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. yeah. We're not well, too far from well, about a decade yeah. out from when that movie came out. That's a I, different kind of vibe, though. I, 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 my problem, if I had any bone to pick with the original Alien, it's just the very end when we see it shot out of the ship. Oh, yeah, that shot, too. Very it's obviously a guy in a suit. Happy but birthday that, shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, the happy birthday shot is a little bit goofy, but it, it works, you know, I, I feel, because it's, you know, that whole... It's uh, fine. It's yeah, not that bad. It's just like, yeah, it's the whole, that whole scene is so scary. And also the part where we do see the alien at the very end, it's clearly a guy in a suit. At that point, mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter. It's like, we've seen the... the, the yeah, we, I'm just being pedantic about like, yeah. there's stuff the new show is going to do better. Just kind of... Well, that's just because... Uh, like, objectively. Te- right? Well, that's just because the technology has gotten... Right, better. that's all it is. But like, to be like, oh, the first one's always going to be the best just seems a little... I, I, I don't think, know. I, I, I would say it's still the best. I, sure, honestly. but I just mean like, we don't know what this new one's going to bring to the table yet, so... No, it just and, comes off as being kind of yeah. Well, yeah. No, I get what you're saying, and I and I, I if we're taking it just factually, Scott's probably not wrong. I mean, I do think like there's Be the most iconic, maybe still. Yeah, I well, yeah, I would say definitely like 
it's not going to be as amazing as the the first movie because it's like that first movie is so good it's a masterpiece it's hard to top but i'm what i'm saying is as a person in hollywood who is in such an immense position of power and who cares so deeply about this franchise you'd think they'd be a little bit more supportive and a little right more <laughs> wanting to say good things about, oh yeah it's shaping up really well you know instead of like yeah. well it's not going to be as good as the one that i made 40 years right. ago it's just like that reads to me is like there's you know again kind of jealousy or pettiness or bitterness yeah, yeah. um but as long as your story's not being like mangled in someone else's hands yeah you know i could see being upset about that but well we don't know like, what the story is yeah we don't know yet so and, i mean and we also like i mean there's also like a question about Ridley's the story that Ridley wants to tell. It's like have audiences really grafted onto that? Like with Prometheus yeah. and Covenant. Uh, Prometheus got mixed <laughs> positive reviews. Covenant got pretty much lukewarm reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, there might, yeah. I mean, it's but people will still see a new Alien movie. It's people of Alien. Well, I mean, will they? Covenant was a box office flop. I guess yeah. it was, huh? Yeah. So it's it's well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel that way. I don't have I, any empirical data, but all I'm saying is this: I I think Ridley should be a little bit more open about nurturing this franchise, and if, you know, see, as someone who cares about it as much as he does, you know, he should be a little bit more supportive of other filmmakers, or you know, in this case you know tv people which you know that's filmmaking as well you know Mm -hmm. Um, tv is not what it used to be in his day sure sure but in any case though i i I feel like i do feel like the show is in good hands i'm excited to see what they come up with it and uh you know i i i hope ridley is satisfied (laughs) i hope he is too yeah i would you know love for that to happen i feel for him yeah but um yeah, well, I, I mean, we'll see. We'll yeah, see if we'll I feel see. for him. <laughs> we'll see if I, well, I, I, from what I've heard so far about the show, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued. Like, I like, yeah, me too. Like, I, I'm, I'm a little bit weary about it being being on the earth, being yeah, a, being kind of a prequel set on earth. I'm a little bit weary about that, but I, I think, I think it's in good hands. And I think, um, I, 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 I think it's probably i think they have something i i I don't have anything to back that up but i Mm -hmm. i I do i have a feeling that they they know what they're doing they've been priming us for it we had the alien on the terrestrial moon in the comics right issue seven coming down the cornfield and and we had the xenomorphs in the corn and covenant so really they've been drip feeding us preparing us to get terrestrial with the alien well Maybe. I mean, they. you could say, you could make that argument they've been doing it since like 1991 with the Alien 3 teaser trailer. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, but which, I mean... Is that canon? I mean... Well, well, I mean, the teaser trailer for Alien 3, which came out like a year before the movie was released, was, uh, it was basically teasing the plot that the alien was going to be on Earth. And... Oh, sick. Uh, but they didn't go with that story and it's also not that great of a story because it's like once the alien is like on earth it's almost like it's it's like couldn't you just nuke it that's the, i mean have you seen avpr you know yeah right uh <laughs> it's, it's in the swimming pool at the right. high school yeah yeah i mean <laughs> excuse me yeah that uh that <laughs> whole thing just didn't really work um, but I don't know. I have a feeling they, they kind of know what they're doing. And so I'm intrigued for sure. Yeah, me too. All right. Absolutely. But, um, but moving Especially on. Especially if it's on Hulu. I already got Hulu. Yeah. Oh, I'll need to get that, but we'll see what happens in a couple of years uh, for now. Um, but mm. let's move on to kind of the meat of uh, what we're talking about today, which yeah. is kind of a retrospective look at David Lynch's Dune and um, we both watched it um, earlier uh, this week and got some interesting things to say. Um, <laughs> Baker, what was your general impression of David Lynch's Dune? Um, 
ambitious. I'm not saying if that's like a compliment or not, because I think it goes both ways. I think anytime you talk about adapting Dune, it's ambition well, yeah, is, yeah. is a given. Um, it, okay, so I, like I said, I tried to watch this movie once before, and I got to about when they landed on Arrakis and the sandworm shows up. Yeah. And so I had seen everything up until that. I kind of remembered it. The second half was like, you know, is interesting. It, I felt like the stakes ramped up. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to get too specific with anything. Uh, but no, no, no. As a general impression, I enjoyed it more than I thought when, from what I remembered it. And yeah, I'm glad I saw it. Uh, yeah. It was, I, I wasn't as confused as the first time either. Sure. So I don't know if that's from osmosis or, or what, yeah. but sure. How about you, what do you think? Well, well. Um, so my general impression is this. Um, I, I, I kind of like you. I, I kind of liked it a, a little bit more than what I was expecting uh, to. Um, yeah, because you hear a lot of shit show. Like you, you hear a college shit show a lot. Like yeah, a lot of bad stories about this yeah. movie. It's yeah, yeah. That, that's all I really. I hear, and we should we should say too we haven't read the book either of us. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I, I I mean we're speaking about the like we've been talking about Doom since we started doing the show and yeah we probably like, mentioned it but just to reiterate yeah, yeah we're we're not like I like I'm aware because because Dune is a you know a classic work of science fiction like it's been referenced ad nauseum so I'm aware of like a lot of stuff like the the Bene Gesserit and probably butchering that a butler yeah yeah just the the butlerian jihad and and things like that i i like i'm, I'm aware of like the terminology and whatnot right. and and the world and i find it all very fascinating because it's like i mm-hmm. watched it's a game. it's a world i want to get into it's intriguing yeah and i watched game of thrones and yeah and I'm like oh this kind of like game of thrones but a lot less houses fiction. but yeah <laughs> sure, but I almost think that's there's almost an appeal there, and it's mm-hmm. just set to a science fiction setting. It's just like a lot of stuff to kind of that's easy to get into, even though it's dealing with very big, complicated, weighty themes and storylines. Um, yeah, but, but continuing with my general impression of it, um, even though I liked it better than I thought, um, I don't know if it's a good movie. I don't um, either. <laughs> I, I feel like it's very unwieldy um it, it's very very um it's not very accessible <laughs> no it's not it's not i mean as much as as exposition heavy as this movie is yeah you're up still front, so confused with yeah, all the exposition yeah you're still <laughs> so lost um like this movie begins just with a straight up like we're just yeah. looking at the actress's <laughs> face for like 20 minutes and she's just explaining that long, every but... well i'm exaggerating but yeah. it's like we're uh we're just explaining everything and you're just like still so confused um, and then she pops back and she's like oh one more thing uh, yeah yeah right 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 <laughs> and it's it, it's so weird um but yeah it's it's very difficult to get into and yeah. that's one of the big problems i think um that Denis Villeneuve is probably very aware of and on top of, and I trust, uh, uh, you know, after seeing both Arrival and Blade Runner 2049, he's going to oh, yeah. I mean, do a good yeah. job of like bringing people into this world Whereas David Lynch kind of embraces the weirdness of it all. Um, mm-hmm. But he still tries to like shoehorn in all the rules and all the like yeah, the- political stuff. And it doesn't feel very organic. It's like people are just yeah. saying it. Well, yeah, and a that, lot of the times they're thinking it. I'm sure we'll get into that. Yeah, but, but yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. We'll talk about yeah. that. But uh, it's like, um, it's kind of weird because it's like David Lynch is known for his surrealism, um, right? And it's you know, it's, there's a lot it's, of that. Yeah, it, there's a lot. There is a lot of that. But at the same time, it's also like Dune is also like a trying to be like star wars and there's like this weird conflict of like wanting to be weird and also wanting to be a convert a a, a conventional commercial film and it doesn't really jive in the way that it probably ought to yeah i guess i don't know if it's trying to be star wars or if it's more just like 
comparable, right? Because it's well, just this big. Oh, well, that's kind of what I'm. What the I'm conflict getting, with the. Well, but, yeah. Well, well, that's kind of what I'm getting at a little bit. Is it's trying to be a story that people can jump into and be on mm-hmm. board with, but it's also there is still to, like the the bloodlines and the chosen one stuff, I guess, too. But but it's um but still trying to be very weird. But with the budget, I'm sure there's only so much David Lynch could actually do. Um, <laughs> Some of the stuff he chose to do were choices. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. We'll get into uh, specifics, yeah. But um, the one thing I did want to say a little bit is I felt like the movie was um, like if we if we break this movie down and just analyze its individual elements, I think it, it's like I could speak very highly of like the production design. Yeah, and definitely. The, and the special effects, ex- except for one particular moment that i there are a couple there are a couple moments uh, I can but, think of. Uh, and the music i love the music by toto did you? Okay. i did i thought it was a little uh, like understated but uh, i actually really liked it um okay. uh, but i didn't hate it each of those moments are uh, each of those elements are like stronger than the whole movie like the whole movie is just kind of clumsy um but um i i mean i don't know i i, I guess Tell me kind of what you thought about some of the individual, like, like the production oh design and the... Oh, the production design? Yeah. I yeah. love the the navigator boy, right? The navigator. Sorry. Was that the I love guy? The, the was navigator. That the, was that the alien in the, in the in tank? In the tub? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think that was once a human who just consumed yeah. a ton of spice, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I believe that's the case, yes. And... Mm-hmm. Loved him. I mean, that's the obvious one, but a, a ton of the sets um it was really gross but the baron's makeup i guess was so, good i i actually you know i i do have some stuff to say about the about <laughs> the the harkonnen stuff um yeah. so, so the the thing is it's like i like the production design and i like the costuming and i like the special effects with like the worm the worm was um, cool yeah, that was all very well done, uh, in, in my opinion. Until they're um, riding on them. That was a little yeah, Oh, yeah, at that point, it starts getting really cheesy. And I'm like, now this is pod racing. <laughs> um, yeah, but sure there, was. But, but um, yeah, actually, the one thing that I did not like, like, if we're talking like, this wouldn't be special effects, it'd be visual effects. It's like the whole it's terrible, like, CGI like when oh were, god the, the, yeah, body, was, the overshields like, yeah <laughs> even for like even minecraft talking, overshields yeah well even though we're talking 1984 and cgi is still in its infancy keep in mind we had tron by this point. <laughs> like this is like really bad even yes yeah, that was not quite sure what they're going for there well, it's obviously supposed to be a shield, but it's like there's a there's like a million better ways to pull off that effect than what they did. That was atrocious. Yeah, I was when I was watching the new Dune trailer with my buddy. Mm-hmm. He was there was a sh- shot of Paul punching uh, Josh Brolin, Ger- Gertie, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that tr- that sparring scene, and they, you see this little like burst of like kind of lightning contained to like his. His, sure his chest yeah oh uh, yeah and i'm like oh yeah that's this scene and i looked it up and he's like how the fuck did you recognize that if that's what that's supposed to be <laughs> well I mean, yeah it's yeah I mean, I mean that effect is you know that's easy to pull off nowadays and there's a million different ways they could have done it in 1984 but the the direction they chose is just that that did not work um no but, but it's well, iconic <laughs> i love it I, I guess so i mean i don't love it for the movie but it's funny yeah i mean it is um but but other than that and also the scene when he's actually riding on the worm um i i thought yeah. i thought the special effects in the movie were actually pretty good what do you um, think of the folding space scene the navigator um oh oh that yeah i i mean i think it's it's very lynchian yeah, I thought it was yeah. all right. It was yeah, kind of, I, he shot the beam from his nose. I don't know if yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. yeah, I mean, stuff like that I really like. It's weird. Uh, it's weird. I also like the, 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 the dialogue over it is like, move without moving. And he immediately like moves. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> well, 
I guess that's something we can kind of get into a little bit is the um the weird decision to do like all the internal monologue. Um, it's like yeah. I'm watching this movie and I'm almost falling asleep because it's it's like it's like am I watching like it's an ASMR? ASMR right? Why does it have to be whispers? I guess yeah. so you know when it's like not on when the character is not in frame. Yeah, but, but it's it, it's a weird creative choice to to do that because yeah it's very novelistic like having like an internal monologue it made me wonder it was like so many characters had it so i'm like so there must be a chapter for each perspective right or it's an omniscient perspective the whole time or or it, it could also be this this occurred to me um there is something kind of shakespearean mm. ab- about about that because it's like if you read like a shakespeare play yeah the, the narrator will well the well the characters like say what they're thinking like just straight up like it's like ah she speaks i shall bring myself closer to her so that i might hear her her, her words more specifically or something like that <laughs> it's okay. like they, yeah. they, they yeah, say yeah. their they say their actions out loud uh and that something that occurred to me maybe that's what they were going for but mm. it doesn't really read that way it just kind of reads like a weird creative choice like ah oh, we need to del- we need to make the scene we need to make sure people understand what's happening in the scene and i'm like for most of the times that we were hearing the internal monologues of the characters i felt like we didn't need it like we could no that was the big I was yeah, like, yeah. or it was stuff they could have just said well they could have like, they could have just said it or it's but yeah we or don't it's need information it. we had already a lot of the right. time like yeah it, it's just like we don't need to be told that oh he's thinking something or he's hiding something it's like we can tell by the actor's expression that right. he's it's hiding the acting something. aspect of the visual yeah. medium yeah it's almost like they were worried that the movie was so inaccessible that yeah it feels like that for that sure. we have yeah that we have to make sure the audience knows with absolute certainty you think uh, it could have been like a lot in post like they didn't plan it that way and like then they just had these like, look, almost like well, blade runner yeah bit. like we'll just dub it over you know uh, record you know, some do you see i'm not sure about that it doesn't because the thing is in like blade runner it feels like so tacked on and while there is that kind of feeling here with the internal monologues in dune it, it ultimately doesn't it, it does of... it, it does feel to me like there there was a it was a creative choice that just didn't work Right, because it, it seems like there are some shots with the actors like, okay, pretend to think, you know? Right, and yeah, like, that, that's what know. I'm saying. It doesn't yeah. feel like, it's, it feels like it was a deliberate choice. It's just, it feels mm-hmm. weird and unnecessary. Um, <laughs> it does. It's confusing, too, because you think stuff's being said out loud. Then you have to do, kind of readjust your brain a little bit. Yeah. Um, so in a way, it actually made it more inaccessible. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, it did. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I didn't want to talk a little bit about like the Harkonnen stuff because I actually hated sure. it. I hated <laughs> I hated everything about that. Um, I'm so, pretty sure in the books he does not float. That's something I've, I'm oh, pretty no, sure no. I've he, Oh, learned. no, no. He does float. He does float. He, okay. It, I thought he, he had like a, a chair or something maybe. but No, no, no. The idea is he's so like um, you, you know, he's so you know, uh, obese, and he can't move. Oh, so he, well, right. So he has right. the suspension belt. He can uh, float, but he can't fly like twenty feet into the air. He's like, you know, like a balloon that lost all the air. Well, I mean, he 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 can. Well, I mean, yeah, he's not like Mary Poppins, but right. He, I mean, but, but he, goofy shots with him is all. You no, know, yeah, it's. I hated it just how cartoony it is. And to be mm-hmm. fair, he was a big. Um, he was on like a sitcom, right? That actor. At the time this was I'm made, not, you know, I actually didn't look into that. I actor. think he's a comedic actor. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, that would make sense, kind of what what Lynch was doing with this. But I guess, I guess, in the book, Harkonnen is kind of like a caricature and kind of cartoony, okay. and and David Lynch just went all in on that um, for this. Yeah, and it just he made sure did just so over the top and it's it's a choice that is i i can see some people like 
embracing that just because it's so weird but to me i just it it just did not work at all um uh, it's so like there's so much spit and like moisture oh yeah and it's like intentionally like gross in yeah it just felt like gross out comedy yeah and yeah and and yeah rats in the juice boxes yeah i mean it's just what's that well, I guess I they're mean, trying to get water out of them, right? But sure, sure. Well, and 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 there is a like a Frankensteinian kind of component, like yeah, they, like the the idea of the idea of like the Harkonnens wanting to, you know, pervade um, the natural order of things to, you know, uh, you know, either ex- to extend their life or to, um, you know, otherwise gain more power is like a theme with them. Um, mm-hmm. They they are kind of the Harkonnens are evil, um, but I I do think uh, it is a little bit cartoony. Even Denis Villeneuve talked about it and said that he's trying to make it a little bit more grounded and real for his version, which is a relief to me. Um, yeah, we only saw the one shot in the trailer. I think of the Baron yeah. looked yeah. a lot better. <laughs> no, no, it definitely looks better. Uh, but then the other. Thing with this with the Harkonnens I absolutely hate it uh it's kind of like homophobic yeah there's like a weird allegory happening there, there, I think, where he's the, like and I I don't know if it's <laughs> Lynch like again just like super embracing the caricature or or what it is but there's like a clear like association being made between like Harkonnen's uh, sadistic and violent tendencies with, right. his, homo- with his homosexuality. And, well, and also, isn't it, aren't they very young in the books, right? Isn't that kind of what it's trying to substitute, is leaving out that element? Well, like, oh, we'll make it more... Well, it's, it's, I well, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's the whole thing with, like... Um, Again, wait, not, we're coming from it not having read the book so this could be important context oh no 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 it's 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 you know the whole thing with like queer coding and whatnot and and like uh you know like like uh you know you have characters that are like coded as being you know uh of a certain persuasion and and but and making those characters the villains to Mm -hmm. try and draw like a connection between you know that their you know implied sexual orientation and their moral character uh, it's been a thing yeah like, it's like for, the weird for a very and... very long time uh and yeah. it's only recently people are starting to acknowledge that and you know try and add like characters that are good uh they're they're you know they maybe they're gay or or whatever but they're also like not bad people to kind of just make not portrayed as like weird others yeah and yeah and make make the homosexuality of the the villain characters just more incidental than anything which is yeah you know which is cool um but in this case yeah Mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot of just like uh homophobic stuff and also the even the stuff with like the the warts on his face is like that's kind of like drawing like connections with std AIDS, aids crisis at the time oh sure yeah and um yeah it's just like to me it's just like it's something that doesn't really i don't know if i don't think it worked in 1984 for a lot of people and i definitely don't think it works hasn't in, aged well no it has not aged well at all in 2021 i was just like one of these sting that, oh, Can we talk about sting for a second oh my god yeah yeah that was <laughs> yeah i mean it, it, it's all very much like you know queer coding for sure every, every, everything about it um yeah. It, but what was Sting's character, which, which <laughs> by the fade way, or Fade, I think fade, 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 yeah, and actually Fade, to my understanding, is not showing up in the new version. Oh, okay. And, but Sting apparently was offered a cameo in the movie. Just, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I personally don't have much to say about about Fade. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> what a performance. Also the. The scene with the cat i don't quite oh yeah that i mean yeah i mean that, it's weird but i i mean i guess i get it there's like almost like kind of forcing someone to you know 
the you know become just as cruel as the Kirk uh, Harkonnens are. Yeah, assimilating. Uh, yeah, it was and, just know, very. That felt very. They've hit Lynch with the cat. Well, well it's also very <laughs> like, like we were saying, it's like very cartoony and over the top, and it's just like right they, they kill animals it just feels like something he really latched onto that may have been in the books but mm-hmm. kind of like went oh, more to, well yeah to me to me i think lynch was really for better or worse just embracing the over the top uh caricature the freedom to yeah yeah I, experiment. I, just, I just feel like it did not work at all uh i absolutely just hated the harkonnens and this for all the, for all the wrong reasons um I, yeah. I feel like that character should be scary and it's not really scary it's just kind of like offensive and <laughs> um yeah, yeah. It's, and and silly really the way he dies as well spoilers sorry I, we can say uh, for oh, one, but... yeah, yeah i mean it, i feel like that's kind of a, a kind of a given at this point but yeah, yeah. The way he dies is really like that's like a, yep he definitely got his comeuppance you know <laughs> it was just he... the sequence of events that happened there was yeah, like... yeah, yeah the girl like rips out his like plugs his chest yeah, and then he like him. And then he like like a balloon. He like deflates, and then he like lands in the mouth of a sandworm, <laughs> like right out the window. Yeah, There's it's a hole so on the wall oh, at the perfect time. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Um, and also, kind of closed off a potential for any sequel, unless they were going to yeah, have like. I was like, wait a minute. How is this? This is just the first book because this is like. Well, yeah, it was it was just the first book, and um, apparently it wraps also things up pretty well. Except the yeah. emperor, I guess, is there. Well, but... I guess if they were going to continue, maybe they would have. Well, yeah, St- Fade gets gets killed. At yeah, he gets end. wrecked. And 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 <laughs> what about Raban? Did he die? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember if he died or not, but it, I I think he he did. And it, I think and it, in the big battle, probably. Yeah, so it's kind of like yeah, they kind of wrap it up. So I don't know what they were planning for. Uh, like, I, I guess the the navigator is still out there. Maybe once. Yeah, but Paul he killed. was he wasn't really a villain though, was he? He was more like a neutral force, if anything. But he wanted Paul killed, so it'd still be a conflict for the character, maybe. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, right. that's true. Um, but it was um, yeah. I mean, it's it's. I, I, I guess kind of the thing with the, oh the I remember the other thing I want to talk about um the music by Toto I, oh, yeah. I, I don't I don't oh, know. yeah I, was, yeah I I liked uh, I liked it a lot I like the the Dune like main theme and I like sure. like the rock and roll so I, I don't know that worked mm-hmm. for me a lot I love I it. should listen to it separately because I think I was pretty distracted with just trying to you know follow the fucking plot yeah. but well I I don't know I I I in, I like Toto. I feel, yeah, I like the uh, the Dune, the main theme, and also like even the stuff when they're riding the sandworm. I thought was really really cool. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't know. It worked all for aboard. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I guess sandworm. kind of just yeah, I, I guess kind of just wrapping things up a little bit. I, 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 I guess I don't think the movie is uh, particularly great, um, and it. It definitely has uh, a lot of issues, and even David Lynch doesn't really like talking about it very much. Um, I all. wouldn't I, even I, really I, say it's much of a precedent for anything either. It's yeah. kind of just like this thing that tried to work and didn't. Yeah. No, I th- I, I think uh, David Lynch has said he he's regretted um, even tanking it on. Like he thought, yeah. like maybe. Oh man. Also, the I have to say too, the love story in this <laughs> was so like. Yeah, it's kind of it's like nothing burger. Yeah, uh, completely. Uh, yeah, uh, but I, I think happens with, in the background. Sorry, go ahead. No, no worries. I I I feel like with um with Dune, David Lynch kind of felt that it was a opportunity to like do some weird stuff with cinema that he he always wanted to do Mm -hmm. um but um the problem with it is when you're adapting dune that comes with a big um price tag and with that price tag it comes with like well i mean this movie has to be watchable so yeah i feel like when i read the first book too i'm gonna be a lot more angry at him for this 
Yeah, because uh, I, I think that the, the book, from what I understand, or the movie, excuse me, doesn't really follow the book very well. No. So I'm glad we did this now because yeah. I was able to enjoy it the most I possibly could. Exactly. <laughs> because I, I don't think uh, after next week, when we see the new one, I don't think. Well, uh, yeah. I, I don't think this one, like what we're talking about right now, this is the, you know, the best possible um like like uh review that we that i think we can we can ever get it because i think after after the new one comes out um mm-hmm. we're gonna kind of look back on this one um uh, not so not so uh fondly uh <laughs> yeah you're not even really looking at it very fondly right now. i was about to say yeah <laughs> um, said too much good about it we're, we're, this is the nicest that we're ever going to be to this movie right um yeah, the baby um, stuff that also is kind of kind of yeah. cool. The, the visuals, but I don't know, man. It was like, okay, now we have this magic child who grew up really fast and knows everything. Yeah, it's a big, weird, clunky movie with some interesting individual elements, but overall, um, its failure is that it doesn't live up to the sum of its parts, like at all. Yeah. Not, it, it, it's yeah. a mess it's a mess There's a lot of good memes though yeah i i mean it's it that's what i'm saying it's like there's some individual moments that are kind of cool like i like the stuff with the sandworm i think they do a pretty good job of like the first like big sandworm scene really building up just yeah, like that scene. you know that what we're seeing is like this almost godlike entity i mean practically um but electricity i, I think act, or yeah. actual mongolian worms but legendary mongolian sandworms have electrical powers so <laughs> traditional uh, well i mean that's a whole nother, folklore that, that's yeah. like that's like <laughs> that's like that's like cryptozoology or whatever of course but it was cool to see that visualized yeah um but anyway yeah i mean dune I, I don't know if you're a fan of the books, I can't see you um, liking this movie very much. If you're a fan of David Lynch, maybe right. that's what I was hoping like we had Justin here for because, like, yeah, unfortunately, he's seen the most Lynch. Yeah, unfortunately, Justin was not able to make it tonight. Maybe he'll join us next week when we're talking about the new one. Um, but mm-hmm. um, it, it's a yeah, it, I, I don't even know if David Lynch fans um would like this very much because it definitely falls short of what you would expect from david lynch even though it does occasionally go in those places it doesn't really um yeah it, it's just it's it, it misses that mark too so yeah final thing i have to say about it is there is a, apparently a three-hour cut um yeah. the spice diver fan edit it's just on youtube has a oh, million yeah? views and seems pretty popular with people who've watched it. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's the last saving grace of the movie. Um, yeah, did not watch that. Um, yeah. Maybe yeah, but, I will after the new Dune if I read the book. Yeah, if, really if, maybe we'll see. I I don't know. That's just I don't, me. I'm not I bringing that feel, to the podcast. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. I'm just like I don't feel particularly compelled to see this again um and yeah, yeah like, I, like i was saying i'm looking forward to the new dune coming out because i want to kind of get past talking about dune um <laughs> it's just right now it's it's relevant in the world in the of news science, baby yeah relevant to science fiction but anyway that's kind of our uh retrospective of david lynch's dune i uh i hope you enjoyed it uh if you like uh, this uh podcast please uh give us a like um if you want to see more subscribe and uh drop us a comment below uh, and tell us what you think um that concludes the show this is uh matt georgiosa mother and uh baker and uh we doing are- in the dune Dune in the Dune. Dune, Dune. Dune the Dune. Yeah, I'm into Dune. Dune your mom. Oh. Got him. Got him. <laughs> All right. Signing off. Good night, everybody. <laughs>